Hello everyone, welcome back to my review channel, and today I'm going to do the next movie of the, what is it? Greatest Horror Classics, 100 movies set. So, the last movie, last one I did was the uh, two movies of the, uh, oh man, how could I already? Alfred Hitchcock Presents, thank you. Ah, oh, the two, like, episodes of a TV series. Now it's two of an actual movie. This one is called Maniac. Maniac. Um, so this is a 1934 black and white movie. It was only 51 minutes. Um, so I guess that's okay. Uh, I just didn't expect it again. Like the Alfred Hitchcock Presents. I didn't realize that was a TV show. Didn't realize this is going less than an hour. I mean, if that's what a movie was then, it could have been like straight a TV movie for all I know. Um, but anyways, I, was, I, don't even, I didn't even write any notes down from this movie. It's straight from the head. I mean, it was... So sure, I don't, I think I can do it. Only only notes I wrote down was just stuff off like Wikipedia and uh, I International Movie Database and stuff that I found out. But um, so International Movie Database gave this a 3.0. Rotten Tomatoes didn't even review it. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, Maniac. Basically, two scientists, doctors, doctor scientists. Uh, one is a would be or used to be a ball build act impersonator. So remember, this is 1934, so it would be like a circus or a, a big like entertainment like uh, place like uh, back in back in the day. So it's ball boat acts start like since have been around since like the 1800s. But easy, anyways, the ball boat acts. This guy was an impersonator in the ball boat acts, but <clears throat> now he's working with this doctor, this this scientist who was trying to reanimate living beings. So he asked this his assistant doctor, the ball build act, Maxwell, uh, to go get a body from the morgue of a recently deceased woman who just died from a poison gas uh, asphyxiation. She's committed suicide this way. I wanted to look it up, but I'm, I'm guessing, you know, people commit suicide all the time. I guess they can, back in the day, I don't know what poison gas they're smoking, but, uh, you know, it's not like... It, Anyways, they go to the morgue, but they have to use, he asked Maxwell to use his impersonation, Volvo act, to be as the morgue guy, the head of the morgue, so to get in there, like, more quickly and more uh, stealthily. So they, he takes a doctor, so I don't know why the doctor asks him to get in there with the, as a disguise, when the doctor follows him himself, but they both get in there. Maxwell decide, uh, disguised as the uh, main morgue doctor. And so he's getting in there. They find the woman. They And the doctor, the head doctor, Ma Marshorts, Marshorts, uh, he injects this dead, deceased woman uh, with this special serum, which, and he starts like, rub, like, like, they both start rubbing on her arms and her, like, chest and neck, like, right here. Like, rub it off the down the arms. Um, there's two other more doctors in here that are out of the room while they're doing this. I just want to, only reason I mentioned this is because while they're talking, you know, just like talking about, hey, we got this new chick, blah, 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 blah. We got this, these girl, we got this girl, we got this new dead body, yada, yada, yada. Basically, one of the actors, both actors are weird in their own right when they're acting. One of them is, is just the typical um, flustered in front of the film, uh, just doesn't know what to do in front of the camera. So he, he at, once he says these lines, he starts looking like one direction, like, and then looks around. And then he's like, says his lines, and then he like goes back to like looking one direction. It's just typical, I don't know what to do in front of a camera kind of thing. And I thought it was just funny to see. So, they get the two doctors, the one, the uh, Maxwell and Marshalls, or Marshalls, I don't know, M-I-E-R-S-L-U-L-Z or something, and they get the body that she starts to be reanimated while in the morgue. So, they take her body to back to their place, back to their uh, lab. Um, so, after that, oh man, the doctor... Is they get back to their to the lab? The doctor's like, yes, in like 24 hours she's gonna be good to go. And uh, they get he goes on to tell them the doctor goes on to tell his assistant Maxwell that he needs a, another body ASAP, one with a broken heart. So he because he has a heart in a jar 
he is reanimated, he wants to put into the next body. That's like his final experiment. He tells him to go to this one of three places, and he decides to go to Dr. Maxwell. He tells Dr. Maxwell to do this, find one more body. He decides to go to the uh, Undertaker, basically with a graveyard. I don't know what, I don't know how this is, but he had to go through a tunnel under the ground and just like crawl on hands and knees to get to this one place. And it's like a room, like of just dirt, I don't know. And it has like a body in a casket. But <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Two cats are fighting down there. Cats are all over this film. Oh, I should have also, I should have mentioned this. I'll mention it at the end. I, sh I should have mentioned it by now. I'll mention it at the end. Um, anyways, the cats fight and scare him away so he just doesn't get the body and he goes back to the lab. He has to get back to the lab and tell the doctor, hey, I'm sorry I messed up. Doctor's like, it's okay. Shoot yourself so you can become my next patient. And he's like, what? He takes a gun. He's like, uh, it accidentally goes off, killing the doctor himself. This drives... Maxwell a little crazy and decides to impersonate the doctor himself. Um, this comes about because uh, after shooting the doctor in an accident, some, there's a knock on the door. Basically, it's a wife of a man who's just kind of like sick. He's sick, so he needs help, and he asks for the doctor's help. So the doctor, Dr. Maxwell, has to impersonate the real doctor to help uh, this woman and his or her uh, husband. Um, I thought they were going to go to him, but they came to the lab. So the couple, the wife and husband, came to the lab. Usually I thought the doctor would go to their house. I thought that's how it was, but no, not this time. Not for this movie. We have to push the plot forward. So he goes, They he tries to help with, he, he doesn't know what to do with the husband. He's just sick. Uh, he goes to the out of the room and to reaches in a bag and he pulls out a bag and it's like he pulls out a syringe and he's like super adrenaline. No, I don't want that. Okay, you super adrenaline. Whatever, it's in a big ass thing. Super adrenaline. No, I, I keep my super adrenaline. I'm gonna leave that there. Anyways, I thought that was kind of funny. Just call it super adrenaline. He pulls out another needler. Needler. Another syringe. About half the size, but it falls off the table next to it. Uh, so they were together, and he, so he accidentally picks up the super drilling. Any doctor, any you don't even have to be. You could be a novice and realize that the super adrenaline is in this huge ass syringe. When the syringe you want is at least about like half that size. So a novice can realize that. Anyways, you see it. <laughs> it's just funny that. Uh, just put it in the same syringe. That's the easiest way to mistake it. Just put it in the same size. Anyways, he ad he injects this man with super adrenaline. Um, he go. This drives the man crazy. So he gets in a like a rage fit. And there's this woman that they reanimate. The doctor reanimated. She's finally awake and walking. And while this guy is going to a fit, this scene where he goes in a fit is stupid. He's just like, <laughs> like he's trying to, like, this is the early stages of David Banner trying to Hulk out. And yes, I did reference the original TV series. Anyways, he's rage hulking out. Um, says, says, has this little monologue he says himself. I don't know, this could be based off something. Anyways, um, pushes his wife down, pushes the doctor down. This woman that they just reanimated earlier today walks out of the room and the crazy raged up Hulk guy grabs her like an, <laughs> like he's about and just picks her up like he's about to walk her over the threshold. And just he just like picks her up and leaves. Right, next scenes you see of him, he's just running down a dirt road. He's just running down. A, it, this is how it ends with these guys because they don't come back up again. Um... He runs down the road with her in hands, um, and then another cut scene, then him again running down the road. He pulls her dress, her dress down, so you get to see some boobies. There are boobies in this film. There are boobies. Um, so you get to see some boobies here. <laughs> I want to say this: same, di uh, different actress playing from the woman who uh, got reanimated to the one he's carrying down the uh, dirt road. 
completely different actress. And you want to know why? The girl got reanimated as blonde hair. You can tell it, even on a black and white movie. Uh, the girl he's carrying down the road, longer brunette, dark brunette hair. Funny thing. Um, so he's basically, he's out in the woods just taking her clothes off, just like fondling her. You don't know what happens with these guys. You, it doesn't come back to them. It mentions them. It doesn't come back to them. So you don't know. I'm just going to say, screw it. I'm just going to say he raped her. Uh, whatever. This guy's a maniac. And it does, it, I mean, he's poor. I mean, everything says not killing her. I mean, but raping her at least first before killing her. I mean, he might be crazy. He might kill her. Yeah, but I'm saying you probably won't rape her first. It's just fucked up, weird scene. They, did. they don't go back to it. Um, meanwhile, back at the lab, when... Maniac, I don't want to say maniac, he's not the maniac, but the rage guy pushed his wife down, he pushed her, pushed her like inside of a room on accident or whatever, pushed her through the door and inside the room and that's the room where the, the dead body of the doctor is, but like you don't see his face. So she's like, oh my god, who is this guy, you murdered somebody and then the doctor has to go about, no, that's my assistant, Maxwell. So this is Maxwell as the doctor is saying, hey, that's Maxwell. On the floor, dead. So, the he tells the story about how he's trying to reanimate him because that's what he does. Um, the doctor that he's playing, and then the wife blackmails him and say, "Hey, how about you? Since you're doing it to him and it works, you do it to my husband, so I can tell him what to do, and he'll listen to me the same way your assistant will listen to you." Um, so he gets blackmailed, and then uh. Like, it's all of a sudden, like, it shows little glimpses between other people, like, there's this neighbor who's losing cats, and it gets, like, the police involved, and the, well, they were, they heard, they were, they're looking, the, now cops are looking in the neighbors, uh, talking to the neighbors about somebody hearing, like, a gunshot go off at the house. So one neighbor, one lady neighbor, call, like, tells how queer the people are. Now, queer back here, back in this time means weird or different and she doesn't mention like how they're queer they're queer they're they're just being queer and that's just funny it's just like that's just doesn't you know i thought that was hilarious to call people queer like yeah yeah they're just being queer um anyways the male but what's really funny is the male neighbor has a backyard full of caged cats really his backyard is full of caged cats. Just, um, I'm talking about chicken coop cages. And he goes on to tell the cops about how he's basically having these cats to, to uh, for their pelts, for their skin, for their fur. Basically, he he has, he, like, he has the cats, so when they die, the rats will eat them. And the, and the cats will also eat the rats. So either way, he gets fur. He gets fur from the rats, and he gets fur from the cats. Wow. Um, he needed, so, there's that. Now, back to the lab. I wouldn't even say back to the lab. Now, you get to see, um, this weird, what is it, like, Maxwell's estranged wife, not ex-wife, estranged wife. Apparently, it's just a thing to do back in the day. It's just, like, apparently, it's part of the norm where guys will just leave their wives, and wives will have no idea. They'll just go on with their lives. That's a sad time, and I know that happened a lot and stuff. But to play it off in a movie like, "Hey, this happens," it's just whoa, kind of kind of weird. But apparently, she gets like they hear about Doctor Maxwell getting inheritance, so the estranged wife goes to him, and uh, she tries to tell the doctor, which is Maxwell, about his inheritance and wants to talk to Maxwell. Now, I should point out before this. He has the doctor as, okay, Maxwell, as the doctor, as Maxwell, has realized he needs to do something with the doctor before he tries to reanimate. Um, so what he does is put the doctor in a brick wall, behind a brick wall in the basement, okay? His cat, the doctor's cat, well, you've seen since, like, the beginning of the film, like I said, a lot of cats in this. Um, cat fights, cat versus dog, I mean, all this weird stuff. They don't care about, like, harming cats, I don't think. So, the cat is watching Maxwell put the doctor owner, his master, inside the brick wall, and uh, he thinks 
He looks at the cat, and the cat is called Satan. The cat is named Satan. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> so Satan is watching him do this. So many, so much, you know, metaphors here. Um, uh, so he chased, he sees the cat watching him. Maxwell, he sees the cat up the stairs watching him. He, he kind of goes crazy. He's like, hey, why are you watching me? I see that. I see a gleam in your eye. And he chases the cat. This is a scene where they don't care. This uh, Back in the day, they don't care how really they harm animals and stuff. You can just tell. They threw cats. They threw this cat inside the um, in the set of the film. They just threw him like, from outside to the to the camp. Like, okay, see, and then he just gets tossed, and then here it gets, like, right in the film. He's like, gets tossed, blam. And it's just like he constantly gets tossed. Feel sorry for that black cat. But really creepy part where he actually goes close into the cat, and it looks like he pokes the cat's eye out. I mean, it wasn't for real. I mean, it was actually probably the best shot here because it actually looked kind of cool. But he looks like he pokes with his thumb the cat's eye out, and then he's like, I got the gleam out of his eye. Ah, and then he eats it. Cool. Creepy part. See, but it shows him going insane. Um, After, like, okay, so he put the doctor in the wall. The cat goes in the wall with him. The cat wants to be in the mask with the master with him. So he jumps in right before he uh, puts the wall up. So... Back to trying to um, deal with the wife and oh, his estranged wife and the wife to the rage guy. Um, he puts both. He, he he's he's going crazy, so he believes that his estranged wife and his the wife that's blackmailing him of this other dude uh, is both like are out to kill him. So he basically gets both of them. To go down in the basement with a with a syringe filled with stuff, and tells each one separately like, "Hey, this chick is going to get me. Uh, is going to try to kill me. How about you try to help me out since I'm helping you out?" Like, basically says that it's like, "I'm going to help you to the to the wife to his estranged wife." He says, "Hey, this woman is out to bla is blackmailing me. Uh, I need to do some stuff so we can leave with my mo with our money and we can go, but I need your help. And then to the rage wife, he's he's like, hey, I'm helping you with your husband. You need to help me with my estranged wife. He's trying to kill me. So here you go. So they give he gives both of them separately a needle and leads them to the basement. This is funny because he basically leads both of them to the basement at the same time. I don't know what they were trying to do with this, but it was just funny to see that, okay... You know you're supposed to like separately take them down there, but neither one could see like what was going on. So that was just funny. He sho he shoves them both down there at the same time. So they both walk down there, shuts the door. They 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 go like they hit each other and go crazy, dropping both needles because they don't see each other. And so they get in a big ass, big old cat fight, big old cat fight. Um, this ends with uh the neighbor, male neighbor with the cats, seeing the doctor laughing, and he calls the cops. You can't hear anything from, like, your neighbor, like, but you could see the guy laughing in his house, so you call the cops. Here comes the cops. Um, uh, one cop car, they piled in like clowns. One cop car piled in like clowns fall with, like, a good half dozen cops on bikes, one cop car, like six cops on bikes. And these are like dirt bikes, dirt bikes back in the day. That was really funny to see. And I was like, what? Anyways, they came out like it was a clown car. One cop car was like eight cops. Just keep coming out. <laughs> they barge in this dude's door without knocking. Again, shine of the times. Um, it's just like, hey, what the? We got, we got warrants to search this whole place and everyone in it. I'm like, what? Like, when did this happen? Uh, because they're crooked. No, I'm playing. <laughs> that doesn't show that. It's just a culmination of the film. Um, so he's like, he hears the two girls scream downstairs. So they're like, ah! And he, the cops, the detectives, like, what's that? What do you think it is? Um, the doctor tries to like say, hey, those are two patients of mine. The the detectives like, let's go down there. Show me. And they find the two girls down there fighting. Um. The guy, the doctor, Maxwell, goes crazy saying, they're out to kill me, they're out to kill me. And then you hear a meow from the back of the wall. 
and the, you hear it again, and the, the detective, again, is like, what is that? What the hell does it sound like? Does it sound like a cat? Yes. <laughs> There's very few things that meow. Um, he's like, let's see what's behind this wall. Um, so they, they try to knock out bricks, knock out bricks, and all of a sudden the two girls, during this scene, when they're knocking out bricks, the two girls, the two females that were fighting each other, like a, just a second ago, are in each other's arms scared. They're like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> so they do, they're knocking out in the wood, They and then they see the doctor right there, and he falls forward with the, and the cat's still alive too on his shoulders. But the, the doctor, dead body doctor, falls forward, and the, the cat is fine, of course. So there you go. Um, at the very end, very last scene, it shows Maxwell in jail. This happened, happened just saying his last little montage. Just be like, ah, I played the greatest trick in the world. Something like that. Um, and that's how it ends. Uh, now, there was a couple of things there. Throughout this whole film, there's just little in-between scenes. Throughout this whole film, there was just little, little four words or just like a, a just a quick saying of some type of of uh, mental emotional functions like fear is or like manic manic is and just like paranoia is just like a bunch of uh, you know d definitions um now that this movie was also called sex maniac that was like the original. Uh, from what I looked up, that was what it was originally called, Sex Mania. I don't know why it had nothing really to do with sex except that one dude supposedly raping her. Um, but the rest of the film had nothing to do with sex. Um, this, I, sh I really wanted to mention this before the film, but it was a loose adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe's uh, work, The Black Cat. So um, there you go. That's everything I could find. Uh, sorry it took so long, man. I wanted to make this at least just like a 10-minute video. And look what I've done. <laughs> so I just want to make this shorter and shorter every time. But that's it. This movie is called Maniac. 1934 black and white film based on Edgar Allan Poe's work, The Black Cat. They originally called Sex Maniac. So there you go. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time. And I will see you guys next week for with another one. Thank you again. Bye.